In a recent interview with CNN's Anderson Cooper, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was asked three times whether Vice President Kamala Harris was the best running mate in 2024 for Joe Biden. She never answered. He thinks so, and that's what matters, Pelosi said at one point. <laughs> Look, things like that do not happen by accident, not with a politician as poised and practiced as Nancy Pelosi. And the incident comes at an unfortunate time for Harris, who finds herself caught in a maelstrom of speculation about her relative weaknesses vis-a-vis -vis the 2024 race. Josh Barrow, one of my favorite columnists, writing recently in his very serious newsletter, made the case for replacing Harris on the ticket. Here's what Barrow wrote. So Biden should run again, and picking a new running mate is the most obvious and impactful step he could take to assuage voter concerns about his age without getting off the ticket himself. He has the opportunity to pick a running mate who's more appealing to voters than Kamala Harris, more credible as a next generation leader of the Democratic Party than Kamala Harris, and more comforting to voters who consider the possibility that his running mate might succeed to the presidency than Kamala Harris. So why wouldn't he do that? So the case against Harris, which Barrow and others have made, boils down to this. She is simply not well liked by a majority of the country, which is a major problem when voters have big concerns about Joe Biden's age and who would replace him in office, which generally speaking is true. According to Real Clear Politics's polling average, just 37% of the public views Harris favorably, while 55% see her in an unfavorable light. The point here is pretty simple. People don't like Harris. Which leads to the next question, why is that? Which is a much more difficult question to answer. Among the options, there's option one, Harris was burdened with a difficult set of issues as VP, including the border, making it hard for her to be popular. Option number two, Harris, as the first black and Indian American woman in the vice presidency, faces both gender and racial prejudices that a man in the same position would not. And then there's option three. Harris is simply not that gifted as a politician and has struggled to adapt to the challenges and scrutiny of the vice presidency. Now, to my mind, the right answer is a little bit of all three of those things. Harris did have a tough portfolio. There does remain in some circles skepticism about the idea of a woman, and a black and Indian woman at that, as the second most powerful person in the country. And as she demonstrated during her failed 2020 bid for president, she is not the most natural politician out there. She is also in a position that is unique among our vice presidents historically. The man under whom she serves is 80 years old. Large majorities of voters have major doubts about both Biden's age and his ability to do the job as president for another four years. And Republicans are already making a major issue out of it. A vote for Joe Biden is a vote for Kamala Harris. You know that and I know that, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley said recently, adding, there is no way Joe Biden is going to finish his term. I think Kamala Harris is going to be the next president and that should send a chill up every American's spine. So Harris is not just being judged by the public as to how good a job she is doing as vice president. She is also carrying the additional burden of being judged on how she would be as president if it came to that. To me, the debate over Harris's political skill and her value to the ticket is, well, pretty much moot. I'll tell you why. First of all, I think we have a tendency to vastly overstate the impact a vice presidential nominee has on voters. People choose the top of the ticket, not the second in command. While Biden's age complicates that equation somewhat, I still think the average voter will be choosing between Biden and Donald Trump, and Harris won't really be on many of their minds. Second, I see no way that Biden tries to replace Harris on the ticket. Why? Well, because my point above, it likely won't make any difference in terms of winning actual votes. But what it would do is drive a narrative of panic that Biden doesn't think he can win with Harris and feels the need to throw a Hail Mary pass to wind up back in the White House. And that doesn't even mention what it would look like and how it would impact a key Democratic constituency if Biden dropped the history-making Harris from the ticket. It might not lead to a full-scale rebellion of black voters, but man oh man would there be some hurt feelings and no obvious way for Biden to soothe them. The honest truth then is that every four years, this story, we have to replace the VP, flares up. Hell, there was reporting that suggested Barack Obama seriously contemplated replacing Joe Biden with Hillary Clinton on the 2012 ticket. That talk may take on more urgency this time around because of A, Biden's age, and B, the existential threat that Democrats believe Donald Trump poses to the country. But to my mind, it's just talk. It makes a fun column and gives Talking Heads something to, well, talk about. It might even make some political sense. The thing is that the juice 
isn't worth the squeeze. The message sent to the BART party base and to the broader public of removing Harris from the ticket is an unadulterated bad one for Biden. It reeks of a lack of belief that he can win in the race is currently comprised and sends a message of weakness and chaos. So what? Like her or not, Kamala Harris is on the ticket to stay. Democrats need to make peace with that ASAP.